Okay, you guys are all, I'm in a fight with all of you guys. Because you're, you're not listening. I don't know why you're not listening. You think more things are entertaining than me. I can't imagine anything being more entertaining than me. So sorry. Um, today, we're here starting a new section on surface area and volume. You will have a test over all of surface area and volume on March 7th. Really? March 7th. Uh, which is a Wednesday before spring break. The Thursday of spring break, I don't know what we're going to do yet, but I'll come up with something good. Um, surface area of prisms and pyramids. We're going to work on this for a few days. Um, well, no, just pyramids and prisms, just one day, I guess. And then we'll do cones and cylinders tomorrow. Friday, you'll basically kind of do sort of a, an intro activity talking about all these lateral faces and bases and stuff like that. So here we go. Um, the blank of a solid is the sum of the areas of all the faces or surfaces that enclose the object, the solid. What do you think that means? What do you think it's going to be? Oh, the surface area. Okay, so surface area. We can put that there. So surface area. You will see that I abbreviate surface area a lot of times SA for surface area. Sometimes I'll just say S if it's in an equation. I'll write just S. Um, so we'll see how that turns out. Um, Today we're going to focus on pyramids and prisms. What do you notice about pyramids and prisms? The 3D. The 3D. So we're dealing with 3D things. Instead of calling them 3D things all the time, this is technical math term called solids. Okay, so instead of being like a piece of paper, which isn't very solid, because you can basically push through it, um, a solid is going to be something that if you were to push it, it's going to keep moving. Okay, so a solid just means that it basically has not just length and width, but also some sort of depth to it as well. Okay, so they're solids. The faces of solids, wait, faces include the solids. So what is a face? What does that mean when we talk about a solid? It's basically like a side, right? So if we were to look at, you know, dice, how many faces do dice have? Six. They have six, yeah, yeah. They have six. And they're actually numbered one through six. You can kind of figure it out in different ways. Um, so faces include the solids blank and blank. So the faces, well, I would say it would definitely include the base. Okay. And then there's also these, these, these rectangles on the side, which I usually call, this is kind of weird, called lateral, oh boy, I'm trying to work here. blank on it. So if that's wrong, I'll, I'll tell you later on, but lateral faces. So here's the idea here. This is a base, and this, this is also a base. Okay. And basically what it is, is, is you're going to have some shape that's not a rectangle most of the time. This up here is actually called a uh, hexagon, and this is also a hexagon on the bottom. Okay. And what the idea is that you had basically two hexagons stuck together, and you basically just pulled them apart a certain distance. Uh, that pulling apart makes each of these faces out here, these lateral faces, I'll put that down here, lateral faces, these lateral faces, are all rectangles, okay? So you have two shapes, two exactly the same shapes, two congruent shapes, in this particular theory, these are hexagons, that are pulled apart a certain distance, which is called the height, and they form all these lateral faces. How many lateral faces are going to be formed? Six, because we have a hexagon, right? And so there's six sides, so now it creates six lateral faces around the outside. Okay? So this is basically made up of two hexagons and six lateral faces. So how many faces are there total? There's eight. So there's one base, a second base, and there's six lateral faces around the outside of it. Okay, so there's a total of eight uh, when we talk about a pyramid, again on the bottom here we're going to have a base. I, I don't know why there's two lines for it, but there's a base. Um, and what shape was the base from here? Pentagon. It's a pentagon. So we could actually call this a pentagonal pyramid. Right? The idea with this is that it's a pentagonal pyramid because the base is a pentagon. And that from each one of these vertices on the pentagon is drawn up to one place in the air. 
Um, it, generally speaking, it's going to be the exact same position, so it's going to keep up. Uh, sometimes it's not, and they'll have different names for that. But for the most part, it's going to be called a uh, pentagonal pyramid. Um, more specifically, try a pentagonal right pyramid, which will be a pyramid. What are these triangles then called? What are they called? Lateral faces. Okay. So lateral faces. So in general, they're called faces, and these are called lateral faces because they're on the outside, or sometimes they call them lattice points. Okay. Um, so how many total faces are there for this pentagonal pyramid? Six. Six. So there's five triangles because it's a pentagon. There's five triangles on the outside that make the lateral faces, and there's one base, so it's five plus one is six. Yes, yeah, that sounds good to me. Okay. Let's see what it says here at the bottom. This will be kind of fun. In the prism above, the shape of the base is a hexagon. We talked about that. The base is a hexagon. And the shape of the lateral faces are <laughs> oh, rectangles. Okay. Are rectangles. Okay. The pyramid above, the shape of the base is a pentagon. Well, we talked about this beforehand, which is good. You guys sound so smart now. Is a pentagon, and the shape of the lateral faces triangles or triangles. It's okay. Are we okay so far? Okay. When we find the surface area stuff, oh, 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 I, I probably won't tell you ahead of time here. The lateral face of the pyramid is the shape of a triangle. The height of the triangular face is called the. Wait, what? No. Oh. Okay, here's the deal. You have these triangles that are going up on the pyramid. This is a, called a quadrilateral pyramid or sometimes a square pyramid because the base is a square. Not the type. Um, and you have something right here called the height. And if you think about a pyramid, if we had a pyramid right here, how can we talk about how tall it is? Well, it's basically from the floor, from that, from that square on the bottom, all the way to that top of the, the top of the point, right? That's called the height. That makes sense. It's how high it is. It's the highest point of the pyramid at the very top. So I have this giant pyramid sitting right here. It's the top. It's the, it's the point. The top is the height. Okay. How tall is it? Well, from the floor to the height. It's pretty the top of the point, which is called the height. <coughs> There's also this other thing called, which is kind of the side of it. So if we were, if we were standing at the very top of the pyramid, and we had skis on, I don't know why we would, because we're probably in the desert, and all of a sudden we decided to just go down the side of it, it would basically like slant, it would slide all the way down the pyramid, which is kind of fun, it's probably in theory, I would imagine. Um, then there's this, this height that's right here, and it's either called the lateral height, you'll see it's called lateral height, or generally speaking it's called the slant height. The reason it, it's listed as an L is because sometimes they'll call it the lateral height. And the reason they call it lateral height is because it's on more of the lateral faces. Okay? So it's kind of, it gets a little confusing because each of the triangles is a lateral face. And it's like, what's the height of the triangle? But then, like, what's the height of the pyramid? You see how that's kind of confusing? There's a height of the pyramid, like how tall is the pyramid, but how tall is the triangle? So that's why there's kind of two different heights. There's a height and there's a slant height. There's the height of the pyramid, and there's the height of just the triangle of each one of them. Okay, um, the height of the triangle, triangular face, is called, what? The height of the triangular face is called the slant height. Uh, the slant height should not be confused with the height of the pyramid. Okay, well, I'm glad that you're on here. I was going to explain them anyway, but you did, you did explain them. So that's good. Okay. Steps for finding the surface area. Okay. With a prism. What you're going to do. Wow. Let's go back. I want you guys to tell me. How would we find the area of this, of this prism? Okay. So find the area of each one of the rectangles. Of each of the hexagons, okay? How many hexagons are there going to be? Two. two of them, okay? So we will start off with two times B. 
right? Mm-hmm. Where B, so there's going to be a little more of this formula. Where B is the area of the base, okay? And it is a capital B. The capital letter is going to tell me that's going to be something I have to find the area of or something that I have to do more to. Okay, so if it's the area of a hexagon, I have to know to find the area of a hexagon. So two times whatever the area of a hexagon is. Okay, if it's a rectangle, it's two times the area of a rectangle. If it's a triangle, it's two times the area of a triangle. Okay? So it's going to be plus. All right. How am I going to figure out all that rectangle stuff? Okay, there's going to be six rectangles. Okay, so it's going to be length times width times six, but of the rectangle, right? So let me go back to this picture again. What's this called? Just that line or from from one base to the other base. It's called the height. Okay. So Andrew, try to change what you just said using the word height. So length times height. What's going to be the length? No, it's called the height. So this is the height right here. What's going to be the area of length when you're trying to find the area of one of these rectangles? It's one of the sides, is that right? Yeah, so one of the sides of the base is going to be the length, right? Okay, and then we're going to multiply that by six, right? So it's going to be six of them. Well, what is, if we had six of these, what is this actually called by what all the way around the hexagon? The perimeter circumference is for circles, but the perimeter. So if we're dealing with six of these lengths, they're all the same. All we're basically going to do is we're going to find the perimeter of this shape up here and multiply it by your height. And so it's the perimeter of this shape times the height. Okay, so I'm going to go back here. So it's two times the area of the base. That gives you basically the top and the bottom. And to find this other part, it's going to be the perimeter times your height. Where P is the perimeter of the base. All right. Of the base. So 2B plus PH equals, I'm going to put equals S for surface area. Is that okay? S equals 2B plus PH. That's going to be the formula for surface area. That's kind of complicated, isn't it? And B is a capital letter and P is a capital letter. What does the B mean? Area of the base. The B actually stands for area of the base. So we actually have to do some other calculations. A capital letter in math when we're doing equations with area and volume and stuff, a capital letter means there's more work to be done. What's this capital letter P stand for? Perimeter. perimeter. So it means we have to calculate the perimeter. It means something needs to be calculated. More work needs to be done. Okay. Surface area of a pyramid. Okay, what do you think it's going to be? How many bases are there? One. So if I was to talk about the surface area, my surface area is going to equal one base plus. What do you think? Okay, so it's going to deal with the perimeter. I agree. So that's going to be basically the bases of each of the little triangle that goes up. What do you think, Hannah? Okay, so the perimeter times each one of the lateral heights. I agree with the That sounds pretty good to me. Do we have to worry about, since they're triangles, do we have to do anything special? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so it's not going to be the whole thing. That's, that's really good. If they were rectangles, we would just do the perimeter times the lateral height. And since they are triangles, we'll say plus one half P times L. And generally speaking, L is written kind of as like a cursive L because it's a lateral height. Otherwise, it looks like a one. Just so you know, that's why I wrote that that way. So again, B, since it's capital, means we're going to have to do more work. This is actually the area of the base. And P is the perimeter of whatever your base is going to be. Oh boy. And L oh boy, is the slant height. And I can just write it as, as slant height, right? Do you know what slant height means? Okay, can everybody read everything that's on there? This is, this is crucial. 
So, surface, do you think you're going to have to memorize these at some point? Are they on your blue sheet that I handed out like a couple of weeks ago? So, if it's green sheet, it's green. If it's on the green sheet, yeah, I think they're going to be golden. Okay, so maybe check if you have your green sheet. Check to see if they're on there. Okay. All right, next thing. Oh, here's a dumb question. How many faces are there? Well, let's see. It looks like there's a, if this is a box, if this is a box, I'm going to usually try to talk about things this way. If it is a box, is there a front and a back? Is there a right and a left? Is there a top and a bottom? So there's going to be six faces. Okay. So a front and a back, a left and a right, and a top and a bottom. Now, which one's the base? Top and bottom. Okay. Could you also, could someone also say the left <laughs> side of the base? The right side, the left side, and the right side of the bases. Could someone say that? Okay. Could they say the top and the bottom are bases? Could they say the front and the back are bases? Right. What you need to do, I think, rectangles are probably the or rectangular prisms are probably the most complicated because there's not just one way to do it. Okay. It's the most complicated because there's not one way of doing it. Someone can just say, you know, whichever one I want to pick is going to be the base, and what opposite is the other base. And I'll just do the rest of it. So it's kind of weird that way because there's multiple bases. Okay. So what is the shape of the base? Let's pick a base. Can I, can I just pick this guy over here to be the base? Okay. So my left side is going to be my base. That also means my right side over here is also going to be my base. Like so. So my right and left are bases. What's the shape of the base? Okay. It's going to be a rectangle. How do you find the area of a rectangle? Okay, it's going to be base times height, so I'm going to say the area of that base is going to equal small or lowercase base times height, which is going to be 3 times 6, which equals 18. Okay, is this okay? Mm -hmm. So the area of my base, which I picked, was going to be the right and left, is going to be 18 square meters. What is the shape of the lateral faces? Those are all going to be rectangles as well, aren't they? Okay, so they're all rectangles. In fact, it's lateral faces for certain are always going to be rectangles. What lateral faces are the same? Well, I would say probably the front and the back are going to be the same. I'd also say the top and the bottom are going to be the same. That's kind of confusing. The front and the back are the top and the bottom. What is the area formula for each lateral face? I don't think that's really good that way, but it's basically going to be for each lateral face, it's going to equal your base times the height. So let's do them all together. So we just talked about the formula. The formula is basically the perimeter times the height, correct? So what's the perimeter of our original base? What's the perimeter of this? How do you find the perimeter? Yeah, it's going to be 6 plus 6 plus 3 times 3, which is 6 plus 6 plus 6 is equal to 2, which is confusing, 18 meters. It's kind of weird that that's 18 meters, square meters, that's 18 meters. That's kind of weird. That usually doesn't happen. And what's the height? What's the height between my bases. What's the height between them? The height between. So when you talk about the height of the rectangular prism, it's going to be the distance between, which is going to be this length right here. Okay. Eight meters again. So I'm basically going to take T times H is going to equal 18 times 8. 18 times 8 would be what? 64 plus 10. 144? Is that right? What would my units be? Square meters. Because I'm taking meters times meters. So that would be square meters. So add the area of each side together. 
to get the surface area, so basically I have my cubic pounds of my base plus my pH. It's going to be 2 times 18 plus k, which I guess is 18 times 8. That would give me 36 plus 144. That equals 180. What my unit would be for area, surface area is always going to be whatever square. So. Okay, I want you guys to ask me some questions on this. If you're wavering about this, if you don't understand the process for this, let me know. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, I don't really like this. Yeah, I think it's I think it's asking a question, but I I don't think it's really what we want to do. Like, no. There, there are some, there are some books that will teach you to do find this one and this one, find this one and this one, and then just basically add them all together. It just, it's this really crazy formula where it's like two L W plus two uh, W H plus two H. It's really messed up and it's really hard to follow. I think using this formula is a much better way to go. Of course, that's also what we just talked about. So, yes, ma'am. That's correct. She said, again, if you're doing a rectangular prism, you pick any two parallel sides. So you can pick the front and the back, and you get the same answer. If you pick the top and bottom, you'd still get 180. You wouldn't get 144 and 36 here, but you would get the 180 in your final answer. Okay? So when we check these, we do have to check for final answer. And if you're comparing yours to somebody else, like you're just looking through things, your work is going to probably be a little bit different depending on which side you pick. With any other prism, like if it's an octagonal prism or a hexagonal prism or any other type of prism, everyone's work should look identical. Okay. All right, other questions on this process? Again, I think the best way of doing it is just to do is, hey, find the area of the base, find the perimeter of the base, find the height between the bases. Find the area of the base, the perimeter of the base, find the height between the bases. Holy smoke, what's this? We have bottom of a regular hexagon with four feet. Okay. So I'm gonna kinda take this step out. I don't really like this step here. I'm just gonna cross it out. I'm gonna ask what the perimeter of the base is gonna be. I'm also gonna ask what the height of the base or what the height is gonna be. Let's do it this way. Okay. How many, and again, I don't like the word sides. I'll show you all sorts of stuff. But how many faces are there? Okay, well, I, let's, let's count rectangles. How many rectangles are there going to be? There's six around the outside. So there's, because it's a hexagon, there's going to be six. Of course, how many hexagons are there? Two. So we basically have two plus six equals eight faces. What's the shape of the base? It's going to be a hexagon. What is the area for the base? Okay. How do you find the area of a regular hexagon? Or how do you know it's a regular hexagon? It has six sides and it does have these little tick marks on here, right? We've learned a lot this year. This has been one of those things that we learned this year. How do you find the area of a regular hexagon? One half S times A times N. What does the S stand for? Um, in silence, that's going to be six. What's the A stand for? Um, we have bottom, which it says up here is four feet. And how many sides are there on a hexagon? Six sides. That's where this six comes in. It's kind of confusing because there's a six and a six. I don't want to be confused. One's the side length and one's the number of sides. Okay, so 6 times 6 is 36 times 4, would be 144 divided by 2, which is actually 72, and it's 72 square feet, because again, I'm finding the area of the base, so area is always going to be something squared, feet squared. Is okay with this? There's a lot to handle. I understand. Okay, what's the perimeter of the base? 
Must be pretty easy. How many sides are there? Six. Six, and how long well, is each side? Six. Six times six is 36 feet. What's the height between the two hexagons? Four feet. Okay. So I would say find the area of the base, find the perimeter of the base, find the height between the bases. Okay. What do you do first? Find the area of the base. I'll, I'll say this again. First you find the area of the base, then you find the perimeter of the base, and thirdly you find the height between the bases. What do you do first? What do you do second? What do you do third? Height between the base. Okay. So find the area, add them all together. So your surface area is going to equal 2B plus PH. That would be 2 times 72. Plus our perimeter is 36. Times the height is 12. Uh, we'll probably use some calculator action in order to figure this stuff out. I got the 144. What? 36 times 12. What was it? 4? 432. Thank you so much for that. That would give you a total of 576. And since we're dealing with surface area, what are our units going to be? Square feet. Okay. Any type of area is always going to have square units. Yes, sir. Holy smokes, look at this. Holy smokes. Alright, it looks like we have a square prism to me. And I'm going to say this kind of weird. I'm going to put, I'm going to say the very front, the square, is going to be my base. So the square is the base, 37 by 37, and it has a height of 9, so it goes back 9. That was kind of weird, but that's the way I'm going to say it. So if I have my surface area, I have to do 2 times the area of the base plus the perimeter times my height. That's probably what I'd write out. I'd write this as 2 times the top of the square plus my perimeter basically going to be 4 times my side length, times my height. Actually, those are S's, by the way. So it's going to be 2 times 37 squared, plus 4 times 37, times the height of 9, which is the length between the, the height between the bases. What's 37 squared? What, what was that? And what's that times 2? 37 is 38. What's 4 times 37? 148. What's 148 times 9? 1332. Okay, let's add these two numbers together. Over 4,000. 4070. That's kind of cool. We don't know the units, so I bet I'm going to have to write square units like that. Now, is that showing as much work as I did on the previous problem? Kind of, yeah. Because I did find my, my area, my base right there. It's S squared. I found my perimeter. It's 4 times my side length. That should work out. Number two. Yes, sir. I'm sorry. Number one. Where do you get your two times x squared? How do you find the area of a square? How do you find the perimeter of a square? Four times the side length. All I would do is I would substitute those into the forms that I already know. Good question. What's the name? Don't call it a piece of cheese. What's the second one? What's the name of that? What type of prism is it? Okay. All right. <laughs> That's a good question. So here's the way that you name prisms. You name them by whatever their bases are. So for me, I'm looking at this. I see a, 
I have a, see a triangle on top, I see a triangle on the bottom right there. And it's two triangles that are just stretched a certain height. It's called a triangular prism. The name of this is a triangular prism. So my base is going to be a, a triangle. So my middle surface area equals uh, 2 times B plus pH. That would be 2 times. How do you find the area of a triangle? One one, one half times base times height of the triangle. It's got a weird part. Oh. How do you find the perimeter of a triangle? You basically have to add the three sides. So I don't know how to write that. So you have five plus five plus five. And then times the height of the of the prism. Okay. So that'd be two times one half times what's the base of the triangle? Maybe I better write all these out. This height six, this is eight over here. What's the base of the triangle? It's either six or eight. Uh, pick one. You're gonna use one for the height. One's gonna be the base. So six times eight. Plus, how do I find the perimeter of my triangle? Yep, that'd be six plus eight plus ten. What's the height? What's the distance between the two triangles? Seven. Seven is actually the distance between the two triangles. There's a triangle on top, a triangle on the bottom. Seven is the distance in between. Each one of these three lengths or heights is seven. Holy smokes! Okay, one half times two is one. One times six times eight should just be forty-eight. Uh, let's see. This would be eighteen twenty-four times seven. Let's see. Twenty-four times seven should be one. This is a little bit more time consuming than things we've done in the past. Although a lot more variables than we've talked about in the past. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Which one? The middle one? The middle one is not a pyramid. Okay. The definition of a pyramid is you have one base and you have one point that all the places go to. Okay. So number three is definitely a pyramid, right? Number three is definitely a pyramid. Yeah. Now, if this was to be a pyramid, there'd probably be like a point like right here. And generally speaking, when they draw pyramids, they'll almost always put the base on the bottom. I don't usually see them slant them at all. They'll slant prisms all, every different direction you can possibly imagine. They won't usually slant prisms. Just be. Why don't you guys try number three on your own? Just try number three on your own. I'm trying to find the surface area of a pyramid. Try to find the surface area of a pyramid. Individually, you're going to find the surface area of a pyramid. I like the way this picture is drawn. I don't. Let me ask you a question about this picture. 
before I get some clarification on this, because if you start with some, you may have run into some difficulties. Um, what is this 12 at? Okay. The way it's drawn, because the bottom of this point is actually on the side, that is actually the slant height. Okay, so we're actually coming down the side of this down to here. It's actually the slant height. So when your slant height is 12, okay, your slant height. So if you were to ski down the side of the thing, it's 12. What is the 13? It's not the height of it. It's very confusing. It's actually, if you were to ski down the edge of this, that's the 13, which doesn't help us at all, does it? Okay, so I think this is very poorly written here. You don't actually need that 13 at all. I'm going to tell you, I'm just going to make something up. I'm going to say the height is 6. Here, I'm just, I'm just going to make something up. It's not going to work out that well. I'm just going to tell you the height is 6. It's not really true, but I'm just going to make something up because it's, it's badly drawn. Your height is always going to be drawn like this. You're going to give me a, some point in here. It's going to be a dotted line to the top, and it is going to have a right angle symbol. But it's going to be in the middle of whatever your base is. Okay, so that's, it is kind of confusing. I, I do agree that it's a little confusing. The surface area for this is going to be the area of the base plus the perimeter times the height. I even want half of here too. Your area of base is going to be 10 squared plus you did one half. The perimeter of the base is going to be 10 plus 10 plus 10 plus 10, so that's 40 times your actual height. I told you it's going to be 6, I, I changed it. That's 100 plus, that's 240 divided by 2, 120. So you have 220. Um, this is a little confusing because I think the picture is drawn poorly. It, it does give you enough information to fire up a UFU to drag it into it. Yes, ma'am. Oh, yeah, times the lateral height. Okay. This is supposed to be the lateral height, not the height. I read the wrong formula. It's be a 12. It's about to be 240. It's about to be 340. Sorry about that. 340. Thank you very much for pointing that out. I think we're going to skip the next example. So I do want to look at these last two. I want you guys to pick one. Do you want to use the rectangular prism or do you want to use the triangular prism? Which one? Triangular. triangular prism. Okay. It says the surface area equals 220. We're given this guy. We're given this guy. And we're given that X right there. We're not given the X. Could we... Well, the thing is, we have to use the Pythagorean theorem in order to find this length right here, in order to find our perimeter. We could do it. It would be a mess. We could do it. Let's do, let's do the rectangle. I want to do the rectangle. Just because I'm, I'm looking at the clock, I know we have like two minutes left. So. Uh, the surface area. So we're going to basically say, let's just take, uh, let's pick this shaded side of our base. So we're going to do surface area equals 2B plus pH. I know my base is going to be 6 times 9. Uh, 6 times 9 is 54. So my perimeter is going to be 6 plus 6 plus 9 plus 9, so that would be 30. And all I don't know is my height. Multiply this out to be 142 equals 108 plus 38. How would I solve for eight? We'll have to do first. Subtract one oh eight. That would give me let's see, that would be thirty four. Thirty four equals thirty eight. This is gonna be a fun answer. I'll divide both sides by thirty and I'll get some sort of decimal height. You guys do have an assignment tonight that I do need to pass out to you. If you do have questions, I do expect...